Guardians, with the final shape, we've gotten so many new toys to play with. Today, we're covering the top 7 most unique builds that I've seen. These builds range from rare exotic interactions that let you deal a ton of boss DPS, to some that give you 95% damage resistance and immense survivability. These builds offer you a way to take on any situation the game throws at you. So rally your fellow Guardians, prepare your arsenal, and join us as we explore the top 7 most unique builds designed to dominate PvE content in Destiny 2. Remember to leave a like if you find this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. I love builds that have really unique interactions between our exotics and the rest of our build, and our first build is a perfect example of that. The Still Hunt Celestial Nighthawk combo has been running rampant in the Destiny community, and for good reason. Like with normal Golden Gun, when you're using Celestial Nighthawk, your Still Hunt Golden Gun turns into one powerful shot. This makes the DPS for this weapon and this build skyrocket. Because you can output so much damage in a short time, you can melt bosses in missions and even put out massive damage against certain raid and dungeon bosses. So this is obviously our boss DPS build, but with Prismatic Hunter it becomes even more powerful. With Prismatic we have access to some of the best abilities like Combination Blow and some of the best aspects like Stylus Executioner. Now your DPS build becomes an immensely strong ad clearing and survivability build, and the gameplay loop goes like this this, you start working up your combination blow with your melee and dodge cycle, which will also make you amplified. In the meantime, use your strand primary to start spreading unravel so that all of your abilities will deal more damage. Continue to throw your grenades whenever you get them back, and when you run low on health, start that melee and dodge cycle all over again. Since you can infinitely cycle your melee and your dodge, you can create infinite decoys that distract enemies and spawn threadlings because we're taking threaded specter. And as long as you're not about to start the boss phase, feel free to pop that transcendence whenever you want or need to for extra damage and damage resistance. The beautiful thing is that if you don't like either of these aspects, you can swap them out for Stylus Executioner or Winter Shroud. And that's because Combination Blow has the same gameplay loop. It works the same, but you get different benefits. And when it comes to improving the build, I shoot for 100 Resilience, 100 Discipline, and about 70 in Intellect. Our dodge and our melee recharge themselves, so Strength and Mobility are basically irrelevant for this build. As for the weapons, I like a Strand Primary to spread that Unravel, Still Hunt as the Secondary so that we can pair it with that Celestial Nighthawk, and a Strong Solar Heavy to match our Weapon Surge. For the Artifact, I mainly want to bring Radiant Orbs to get 25% more weapon damage whenever you pick up an orb. And we can take Galvanic Armor to gain an extra 30% damage resistance just by using our melee a few times. And where does this build excel? Well, it's a mix of short range and long range, boss DPS and ad clearing potential, and even survivability that makes this build excel in almost any content. As long as there's a crit to hit, this build will absolutely cook. If you haven't already, definitely give this build a shot. It's really one for the books. And next on our list, we have a Titan build. And Titans have been missing one big thing. A one and done super that you can use on any target at range. We've had options like Thunder Crash or Pyrogale and Burning Maul, which those can't really be used on most bosses. With the final shape, we finally got one. With Twilight Arsenal, you can deal decent damage at range on any boss. The real fun thing is if you bring it into any activity like Onslaught, you can use it for ad clearing by picking up the axes and hacking and slashing away. But with this build, you aren't lacking in the ad clearing department. With Consecration, we send out two solar waves, the first scorching targets and the second igniting them. These ignitions clear a ton of enemies, and on Prismatic, we can take the Frenzy Blade so we get three charges to work with. We bring aspects like Knockout for health back on melee kills, and between Facet of Protection, Transcendence, Resilience, and Galvanic Armor, we get upwards of 67% damage reduction at a moment's notice. And with Transcendence, we get so much melee energy and grenade energy that we can constantly spam ignitions everywhere and continuously suspend enemies. So what's the flow for this build? Well, you want to remember to use your grenade often. Since we take an arc grenade, rapid kills will make us amplified and in turn give us that 30% damage resistance. Then use your Consecration Slam by sliding, activating your melee, and while you're in the air, activating it again. With just one melee kill, you proc unraveling rounds for your strand weapons. So start spreading that unravel. Now when you hit an unraveled target with your Consecration Slam, they take an extra 10% damage. And if you ever get into trouble, quickly pop your Transcendence to gain 
extra damage resistance and more melee charges which will in turn heal you when it comes to improving the build for the exotic ideally you want to go for an exotic mark with spirits of inmost light and syntheseps otherwise i would run heart of inmost light which is an exotic chest piece and bring that for most content so that i can get back my melees at a rapid rate for stats i shoot for 100 in resilience and strength the rest should go into discipline you gain so much benefit from your melees that they really are the number one option to go for i really like buried bloodline with this build having on demand weaken is strong but being able to activate devour not only gives you more health but also means you get grenades more often which in turn procs amplified giving you more damage resistance i love to bring a strand primary and heavy for me that means the breach light with pugilist and desperate measures for more melee energy and damage and i also like to pair that with pro memoria with reconstruction and bait and switch for good boss dps and mini boss dps as well as good ad clearing this build gives you a mix of everything but it excels at ad clearing unfortunately titans don't have the strongest build for boss dps but this is one of the strongest options available warlocks have one of the goofiest and funniest combos in prismatic you can use getaway artist to spawn an arc buddy helion to spawn a solar buddy no time to explain to spawn a kinetic buddy and bleak watcher to spawn a stasis buddy that way you can finally have friends to play with while this isn't practical or the best option a version of this is see with getaway artist you consume your grenade to spawn an arc buddy and go amplified which gives you extra damage and damage resistance just for this season the cool thing is when you pair that with bleak watcher you also pop out a stasis turret which now gives you a way to spread slow freezing and shatter so that you can take advantage of your darkness debuffs this is already pretty powerful but we add in feed the void to gain access to an enhanced version of devour by getting any ability kill with this devour we get full health on kills and up to 40 percent of our grenade back which allows you to create more arc buddies and stasis turrets we then bring three fragments to make this build even stronger with facets of courage and ruin you can deal more damage with your arc buddy and grenade to enemies affected by your turrets or your melee and since our turrets will freeze so many targets we now get extra damage and size from those shattered targets we then bring facet of awakening so that rapidly defeating targets will spawn an elemental pickup depending on the damage source this mainly means ionic traces from arc buddies and stasis shards from your turrets ionic traces are super strong since they give 12 to 15 percent energy for all of your abilities and stasis shards give you more melee energy the flow for this build is pretty simple consume your grenade to create two buddies and gain damage resistance get a powered melee or arc buddy kill to proc devour once devour is active kill anything to continuously gain grenade energy and keep consuming that grenade whenever you get it back if you get into trouble and you don't have devour active pop your transcendence to gain extra damage resistance as well as a ton of ability energy to proc devour again i like to bring song of flame as the super of choice for most activities but if you're in a raider dungeon simply swap to nova bomb for boss dps as for the stats i shoot for 100 in resilience and discipline then i go for a balance of strength and intellect both are super strong and useful there are a few weapons that really help this build become even stronger the call is excellent for general ad clearing and can roll with demolitionists so you can spam normal grenades in between consuming them sunshot or any general ad clearing weapon is fantastic for taking advantage of devour and getting back more grenades for the artifact we have a couple that we want to bring radiant orbs to give you 25 percent weapon damage on orb pickup galvanic armor which gives you 30 percent damage resistance every time you consume your grenade shield crush which gives you grenade energy and damage by consistently staying amplified and if you plan on using that nova bomb be sure to grab expanding abyss for the extra damage on weakened targets this build is a ton of fun to use and honestly very strong you have immense survivability between devour and damage resistance a ton of ability regeneration high ad clearing potential and ad control with turrets and buddies and honestly it feels so goofy pooping out a stasis turret everywhere just try not to put one in front of a teammate and for our next build we have a hunter build that causes an immense amount of ignitions listen i know everyone hates combination blow on hunters but the fact of the matter is it's really strong which is why it's showing up on this next build with exotic class items giving you the benefit of two different exotics we can amp up our build to extreme levels for this build we're looking at a class item with spirits of caliban and syntheseps see now any powered melee kill does 165 percent more damage while you're surrounded and it creates an ignition which is basically like a better version of consecration on titans with combination blow we have an infinite number of powered melees to work with and we can use normal melees in between in case we don't want to dodge when paired with facet of courage for 10 percent more damage stylus executioner giving us 200 percent more damage when we're meleeing while invisible we can deal 1037 percent 
more damage with just our melee, which again causes an ignition. And remember, ignitions scale with the original damage source. So this means we can easily wipe out any target and any targets around them. So we bring Facet of Ruin so that these ignitions have a larger area of effect. And if we can shatter a target, they'll take even more damage and also have a larger area of effect. You can then bring Facet of Bravery for unraveling rounds for your strained weapons, Facet of Protection for extra damage resistance, and Facet of Blessing so you can start health regen on every melee kill. What's the flow for this build? Well, it's very simple. Use your dodge and melee to work up stacks of combination blow. The whole time, you'll be causing ignitions, going invisible, and shattering targets. It's really that easy. There are things you can do to min-max this build, but honestly, it's so strong that you too can become a fellow crane eater and just punch things. For stats, I shoot for 100 resilience and discipline. Any leftover stats can go into intellect because mobility and strength are irrelevant. And with how often you go invisible, recovery isn't needed. As for weapons, since your mid-game rotation is just meleeing and dodging, you can really bring any weapons that fit the activity that you're running. We do want to bring a few artifact perks to make it even stronger. Radiant orbs give us radiant on orb pickup, giving us more weapon damage. Galvanic armor so that we can have that 30% damage resistance just by using our melee. Shield crush so that we have 25% grenade recharge and 20% more damage with our grenade. If you bring the stasis super, you can also swap out a fragment for facet of purpose so that you can have 20% more melee damage, but honestly, it's just really overkill. This build is an immensely more powerful version of the well-known Arc Hunter build. You can cause ignitions everywhere while dealing a ton of damage to any target and consistently go invisible, making it super strong for any level activity. And this next build is one that I'm hesitant to recommend, but not for the reasons that you might think. See, in a recent interview, Bungie said that they're talking about Titans a lot right now, and they will be expanding the Prismatic class with more aspects and fragments. Well, I recently put out a video covering a Strand Titan Stronghold build that is honestly very strong, but if they're bringing more aspects and fragments to Prismatic, like Banner of War, then this build will immediately switch to becoming a Prismatic build. Until then, we can use Strand to get numerous buffs to our swords and survivability in total. With swords, you end up putting yourself out in the open, so you need numerous ways to heal and take less damage. We bring Banner of War to not only get 10% more damage with our swords, but also for its immense healing. We then bring Into the Fray to have another way to easily activate Woven Mail by destroying a Tangle. This now means we can activate Woven Mail to take 45% less damage, get Restoration times 2 by blocking some damage with our sword, and have Banner of War consistently healing us in the background. But that's not all. With Frenzy Blade, we can sever a target, meaning they will output 40% less damage, so those tough mini bosses or bosses, just melee them before you start dealing damage. So the gameplay loop goes like this. You get a powered melee kill. This will proc Banner of War and create a tangle so that you can activate Woven Mail. Whenever you need to close the gap on enemies, guard to block nearly all the damage and immediately deal damage with your sword to gain restoration times two. After killing a few targets, feel free to swap to your primary and wipe out the rest. And there are a few helpful tips to really master this build. When you're approaching tough targets like champions or mini bosses, you have three options. Suspend with your grenade, use your powered melee to sever them, or bring a tangle to have guaranteed Woven Mail. Try not to use your heavy tack with your super. You'll need to have charge for your sword to block in the first place, so if you use your heavy, you could get caught out in the open. This build takes a lot of getting used to, but once you have the gameplay loop down, it's really strong. With all the ways to heal and take less damage, you start to feel unkillable. For stats, I shoot for 100 resilience, and then a mix of strength and discipline. With the final shape, we got a brand new sword, the Ergo Sum, and it pairs perfectly with this build. The main advantage of using Ergo Sum is that it's a special weapon, meaning you can use any heavy you want, which really opens up this build to be used in any activity. Since Ergo Sum will get a huge benefit when being used on a Prismatic build, this build will become even stronger once we have the right aspects and fragments on Prismatic. As for the artifact, we bring Threaded Blast so that Tangles make a bigger and more powerful explosion when destroyed by a strained weapon. We also bring Blade Stamina to get more sword ammo on rapid kills, and then we pair that with Argent Blade to deal increased damage with our swords whenever you have armor charge. With so many ways to heal and take less damage, this build holds up in even the toughest activities. Now that we have Ergo Sum, this build has really been taken to the next level. And the level of support you have with this next build is unreal. Warlock's got a new solar super in the final shape called Song of Flame. This super not only gives you and your team more damage resistance and weapon damage, but it also gives you and your teammates increased ability regeneration. So whenever you're in an ad clearing activity or boss phase, this is super handy. That's why for this build, we bring the exotic Mantle of Battle Harmony. Ideally, you want a class item with Spirit of Apotheosis 
symbiosis and harmony but if you don't have it mantle of battle harmony will do the job see mantle of battle harmony got an update to let you get an extra one and a half to four and a half super energy per kill with weapons matching your super so with this build we bring solar weapons to rapidly get our super back and consistently pop song of flame to help us and our team with aspects like feed the void and helion we can heal ourselves and get back a ton of grenade energy and even have a solar buddy at our side that does a ton of extra boss damage so the gameplay loop goes like this throw a grenade at enemies to proc both devour and become amplified we use our melee on any target that isn't unraveled to start spreading your darkness debuff then start killing with your solar weapons to rapidly gain super energy in the meantime with every kill you get you gain grenade energy from devour so whenever you get your grenade back throw another these grenades give you back a ton of ability energy so be sure to phoenix dive often to keep that solar buddy around whenever you have a boss or mini boss or there's just a large wave of enemies pop that super to shred through them while staying basically unkillable if you don't have your super available pop transcendence to deal more damage and amp up your survivability with transcendence giving you 20 percent damage reduction surrounded giving you 15 percent and being amplified giving you 30 percent you'll be taking 52 percent less damage and that doesn't even account for your resistance mods for stats i shoot for 100 resilience and discipline and then i go for about 70 in intellect since we want solar weapons red death is really a fun option since it helps heal you if you don't have devour active otherwise you'll be consistently healing your teammates as the ultimate support player you can also bring sunshot which excels at clearing out a ton of enemies to get back that super even quicker bringing a solar machine gun for ad clearing is always a good option for normal activities and for raids and dungeons we swap out to a dps weapon of choice for the artifact you want to bring radiant orbs so that picking up orbs make you radiant galvanic armor which gives you 30 percent damage reduction when amplified shield crush for consistent increased grenade damage and recharge rate and transference while transcendent you gain more melee and grenade damage and more transcendent energy back for weapon kills so where does this build excel well with song of flame we become the ultimate support tool for us and for our team we have immaculate survivability and damage what more could you want the arc grenadier titan build has always been a ton of fun to use but the biggest problem it has is survivability now that we have access to prismatic new artifact mods and updates to our abilities it's back and stronger than ever this build takes everything you know and love about arc titan and mixes in some stasis for extra damage and survivability we bring the trio of knockout thunderclap and pulse grenades so that we can have super strong melee and grenades as well as get health back on melee kills we then pair that with two very powerful fragments first with facet of balance we can use all of those light abilities and even our arc weapons to generate more melee energy and since we're mixing in stasis we can use that to generate even more grenade energy and second we take facet of awakening now rapid kills create an elemental pickup depending on the damage source normally this is just okay but ionic traces give a ton of ability energy 12 to 15 percent for all of our abilities and since we mix in stasis we'll also be getting back 10 percent melee energy every here and there now we have numerous ways to create a ton of ability energy we bring heart of inmost light the exotic chest piece as our exotic of choice the end goal is to have an exotic class item with spirit of inmost light and either verity for more grenade damage or armamentarium for an extra grenade charge and more ability energy the gameplay loop goes like this spam your abilities pretty simple but that's the beauty of arc titan we bring so many ways to increase all of our ability regeneration that basically anything you do benefits you in some way the main thing is that since arc rapid kills now create ionic traces you want to mainly focus on getting arc kills but if you ever get in a bind wind up that melee to clap some cheeks for stats i shoot for 100 resilience and then a mix of both strength and discipline for the weapons i love taking arc weapons in both the energy and heavy slot since we're on prismatic ergo sum with a wave frame is actually really strong since you get a damage buff while transcendent and wave frames make it super easy to shatter a ton of crystals for the artifact you want to bring radiant orbs so that picking up orbs now makes you radiant galvanic armor so that you gain 30 percent damage reduction when amplified shield crush for consistent increased grenade damage and recharge and transference so that while transcendent you gain more melee and grenade damage and more transcendent energy back for weapon kills with arc we can spam our abilities like no other with changes to knockout and thunderclap we now have a ton of damage resistance and survivability and glacial quake does a ton of damage to the right boss and there you have it guardians i put links in the description to these builds in case you want to see a more in-depth breakdown of how they work remember mastering these builds is only the beginning experiment with different combinations tweak your loadouts to suit your play style and never stop honing your skills if you found
found this video helpful or just enjoyed seeing a new perspective, feel free to like the video and comment down below what unique builds have caught your eye recently. Keep an eye out for future videos as we continue to explore the ever-evolving world of Destiny 2. Until then, may the threads of fate be ever in your favor. This is Lucky Mech, signing off. See you on the next adventure, Guardians.